Rico, if I may, this may be off center, but press conference yesterday, Matthew Schembechler. I want to respond to three articles slash columns, mm-hmm. all published after the press conference. We talked about it briefly, odyssey.com rewind if you missed it. And and I want to know how after watching and listening to three victims of sexual abuse, how the tone of Wojo's article, Myth Album's article, and Danny Murphy's article, how the tone is to run out and either directly or passive-aggressively suggest that you want to discredit victims of sexual abuse. I just want to understand this now. Because when you read the pieces, and you're running out to find the couple people who will defend Bo, you're asking the wrong questions. I don't need to hear from Kathy Schembechler or Shemi Schembechler. I want to know about what you heard at that presser, and I want to know about whether you want to find out about what else is going on here. But see, this is the thing. I thought about this, and and you can read the pieces. At least Wojo had the decency to say the statue should come down. Mitch just spent the whole time saying what a big fan of Bowie was and how surprised he was. That's not the point, Mitch. Right. It's never been the point. Or or, or the one statement that he put on uh, Matt Schembechler where it was basically like, uh, yeah, let me tell you everything bad about him. Right. He's adopted. He's just that and the other. Uh, but n- none of that means anything. No, let me. Then let why me, did you spend all of that time? I'm not trying to discredit or cast aspersions on Matthew Schembechler, but... Enjoy this next paragraph. Right. See, here's the problem, and it, it's twofold. One is it's pure confirmation bias. Mitch and Bob and seemingly good old Murph, they want to be right on Bo. And in the case of Wojo and Mitch, they were too close. This is a guy they admire, guy they covered. Mitch took a sentence of his column to tell you how big of a fan he was. So in their writing, they're immediately opting for how do we get what we want out of this? How do we protect Bo? I'm stunned. Like, that's the one thing, too, is the line about how surprising it is. Well, that's not the Bo I knew. How many people do you run around and go, yep, thought that guy was a rapist? Oh, Pete over there? Yeah, I always thought Pete was a pedo. Mm -hmm. No! Grow up, Mitch. Grow up, Bob. People are a lot different in the dark. A lot of people live a lot of double lives. Mm -hmm. So correct, we're all stunned by this. But here's the problem. If one person comes out and makes an accusation, you don't really have an opinion. You let it play out. Two? All right, a little more. Three, it gets tough. But we are at over 800 victims. Can I just say, please, can we stop questioning these people? Please? See, I listened to the shows earlier today. That's how I knew Doug wasn't here and John wasn't here. And for whatever reasons they're not here, I don't much care. I just don't understand it. The point, the point, and Wojo's not here tonight either, so it's a, it's a Wolverine hat trick that nobody has to address this. The point is... Imagine this. I hear people all day calling in attempting to defend Bo Schembechler because you you don't you want it to be false. I know that. It's confirmation bias. But let me help you with something. Imagine Mitch or Bob after Larry Nasser is unearthed as a monster. Imagine them penning a piece, finding people who were stunned that Larry Nasser were a monster. I mean, he was an Olympic doctor. Mm-hmm. He was globally Respected accolades. Yeah, I'm sure he got some people gold medals. And Larry Nasser had fooled parents, mm-hmm. the gymnastics community, the USAG, MSU, police, everybody. Now imagine if they had just found a couple people that said, you know, boy, stunning. The Larry I know wouldn't do this. Mitch and Bob would have been out of a job. Out of a job. But yet when it comes to Bo Schembechler, we are out here openly And I'm telling you, that's what those pieces intimate at a minimum. Openly trying to cast doubt (laughs) upon grown men 
who are victims of sexual abuse who are coming forward in a case where the accused in Dr. Anderson and the empowerer in Bo Schembechler were, were almost a thousand cases deep. It's just so clear to me, whether it's Attorney General Dana Nessel, whether it's the local voices with Mitch and Wojo and other shows, we're not going to get a real investigation on this unless it comes from somebody outside the bubble. Because people here are way too close and way too compromised. How on earth are we victim shaming? How many phone calls am I going to take from people who don't have the bravery to just come out and show what pigs they are, but they want to hint that they doubt the stories? They want to passive aggressively go after Matthew Schembechler. Like, guys, what are we? What do you need to see? Do you need Tim? Like, do you need um, uh, Tyrone Wheatley? Do you need Charles Woodson? Like, what player would have to come out for you to believe? Yeah. Do you need an assistant coach? No, not big enough. Like, what do you need to believe these men and women and put aside your childhood fantasies of what you thought Bo was? Because it's looking increasingly like Bo was not only a scumbag, but he was also evil. And for you who want to come out and go, well, Shemmy says he knows it didn't happen. Shemmy wasn't even alive. Matthew came out with a very detailed report. Okay? Why would I not believe him when there are 900 reports? Not one, <laughs> not yeah. two, not five. 900. You had a grown man on stage yesterday saying everyone in the locker room knew. It was part of our culture. Giovanni Johnson said it would be impossible for, for Jim not to know. We all knew. And then you want to sit there, if you're Wojo and you're Mitch and you're Murphy, and you run and find a couple people who go, ah, it's not the ball I knew. You still don't get it. The school's apology yesterday, Rico. They still don't get it. No. It's not just a statue. It's not just a name. I mean, Bob went to the press conference yesterday and basically asked the victims, what's on your shopping list? What do you want? They already said sorry. And I'm like, bro, are, are you really? It's not, you know, it's not, it's about justice. And that's really where I, I don't understand how 900 victims and growing at the University of Michigan, not that it should matter, but I mean, it is one of the jewels of the state. It's one of the first pe things people think of with the state. 900 victims. The legend of Bo Schembechler and Don Canham. And Dr. Anderson was abusing people into the late 90s. Mm -hmm. That Olympic wrestler, what was his name? 1998. All the time I see crime solved 30 years later, 40 years later. Mm -hmm. Investigations that were kept warm by somebody who cared. And now I look, and, and, and yesterday, Attorney General Dana Nessel saying, unless I get full waivers of attorney-client privilege, I'm not even going to bother? Mm -hmm. Wait, what? We got, because, Mike, we've gotten to the point, well, they're dead. So but they're not! We, we'll ne no, 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 no. What you'll hear is Dr. Anderson and Bo, and all, these people are dead, so what's the point? It's sad, but let's just move on. That's will and oh, this is the quote. So we'll never hear their side of the story. That was even in Mitch's out. Oh, first uh, the coming out you the gate hear it now. Coming out the gate, there are three truths and accusations: the accuser, the accused, and the actual truth. So, so would Mitch write that article about three truths about Larry Nasser? Mm -hmm. Where was the three truths for myth? Well, what was he hanging with Jason Richardson at the say, Final Four again? He probably asked Jason Richardson his quote. Mm -hmm. I just it, look. It 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 is but what the, it is no, at this but that, point. This is where we are right now. Is well, they're dead. What do you want us to but do? But that's such a lazy approach. I How understand, many, and I'm not yelling at no, you. No, no, no. I just, get it. I'm that's called passion. Because this is the layup for columnists and for media. It's a layup. Write what needs to be written. It doesn't stop with a statue. It doesn't stop with the name. Ask probing questions. Provide your opinions to them. But to come out. And we're going to go find Shemmy, and we're going to find Kathy, and then we're going to do these cute little paragraphs that cast aspersions upon Matt Schembechler. Dude, that paragraph was, 
I, I couldn't believe when I read that. It was every oh, he did this, he did this, he did this, and he did this. Right. But forget about what I just said. Right. Forget about that Gilvani Johnson and, and Kwiatkowski were on stage yesterday basically saying all of my teammates knew. Right. So instead of asking the questions of who else knows, who's willing to talk, can we find justice, we're taking the easy button. A couple people are dead, might be difficult. Goulet, yeah, I'm is- sorry, but like, no. The answer's no to that. Yeah, Michigan's already said they're sorry. They're going to give you some money. Can we just move on? No, you can't. That's not how it works. And to me, there are plenty of people alive who, according to those two players, knew. And were in an authority position and knew. Those people, not the players, not Jim Harbaugh. No one's coming after any 18-year-old player who didn't want to play whistleblower. That's not what this is about. This is about the adults in the room. This is about the people in administration. This is about how high does it go. And if you don't ask the questions and you don't put in the sweat equity, you're never going to get those answers. Mike, I mean, how about the fact that they go above Bo, they go to Canham, Canham fires him, Bo says, nah, you're not doing that, bro. He's my doctor. Right. He's coming back. But he didn't know about this. Like, Canham, apparently, when they walked in the room, he was like, what? Doctor's gone. Bo comes back and says, no, he's not gone. But he didn't know anything. How many members, how many people who coached with Bo are still alive? Well, they won't want to talk about it. You don't know until you ask. Mm-hmm. All it takes is one person who wants to do what's right and who wants to gain some accountability. But you're not going to know. Dana Nessel spent two years investigating MSU appropriately. Dana Nessel had every right to go after MSU. And MSU did not waive attorney-client privilege. She made a stink about it in the media, even though no university ever would. No university would turn over everything. It's why Michigan hasn't. Why do you think Michigan hasn't turned over the notes and what built the report that they paid for? Because no university would waive attorney-client privilege. But Dana Nessel spent two years investigating. And I I could dig up quotes right now from like the the winter of 2019 of her saying, I am committed to finding the truth. I don't care if MSU doesn't want to help me. Where is that same intrepid reporting and dogged determination when the University of Michigan, if you have 900 victims that have come forward, let me help you. You're probably into the thousands. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to show an interest in that as an elected official? I'm sorry, but it's just clear you can't count on Bob, you can't count on Mitch, you can't count on Murph. It's just they're too close to it. Or there's, or there's a business reason they can't do it. Well, it's funny because I'm at the same press conference and last night you sent me the things like, have you read this? I'm like, Mike, I was there. So why do I need to read what they had to say? Because yeah. your boy said, hey, brother, right. get in right. on this. And I, I, I'm reading this like, you've got to be kidding me. Like They almost tried to trip over each other trying to find people who are going to say, well, no, Bo's a good guy. Right. So Bo's the question is guy. simple. What do you people need? What do you people need to put this to bed? Because I'm going to tell you something. And rightfully so, I didn't feel the call casting doubt on the victims of Larry Nasser. Why am I taking calls on the victims of Dr. Anderson and their credibility? Why, why is it that I'm listening to writers doing the, well, maybe we won't know the truth routine. Well, this person believes in Bo. Why, why, why are we doing this? Why is their words not good enough? How many victims? Is it 900? Is it 1,000? Do you need an NFL player with a gold jacket? What do you need? You know what, Mike? I don't know. Because the, the way they went after them, this is why it's hard, especially to get men to come out. Why? Why, because, why, why tell your story if this is what you're going to endure basically, from writers? Yeah. Oh, I, I mean, when Giovanni Johnson is up there talking about how he was digitally raped and how he's you know, massaging his testicles, asking him about his sex life and whispering in his ear. And I'm sitting here hearing this just mortified. It's nightmare fuel. And then you want to come out and say, well, you know, these guys are dead. So we'll never know their side of the story. No one's making this type of story right. up ever. Much less 900 people. Right. This is not something somebody's trying to make some money. No. You, because even though they did nothing, that was degrading for them to relive that. Sorry. No, no, no. I'm calling a 30. 
We'll get the whiteboard. Let me throw the number out. We're going to be here till 6, 248 539 Pisses me off. Your response, it should. Wojo, Mitch, Murphy, the coverage. Also, what else do you need? What do you need to stop calling our radio shows attempting to defend a dead guy? That's what I need to know.